All right, folks, so this is going to be a video review of the Retivis RT50. I was contacted by the folks at Retivis and they asked if I would do a video review of this product. And of course I said yes. So they sent me this radio free of charge in exchange for this video review. All right, so let's just get a look at the box. On the side, you can see that this is a UHF radio operating from 400 to 480 megahertz. It looks like there is a VHF version available, but uh, I don't have that one. Taking a look at the other side are some specs. You can go ahead and pause this if you're really interested in it. Um, the big thing is, is the output power. It goes up to 9 watts, plus or minus a watt here. Uh, so they're calling it a 10 watt radio. Let's open a box up and see what's inside. So the first thing we see is a user manual. And uh, I took a look at this before the video, and it's a reasonably well-written English manual. It's about 40 pages long. We'll take a look through that and see if there's anything that we need to know. And it also comes with a chart explaining its IPX rating for waterproofness. So this radio is IP67 rated, which means it can uh, go about a meter deep in water for 30 minutes is my understanding. Let's take a quick look at the radio itself. And underneath the tray, it looks like we have a couple other things. Now this radio shipped with a programming cable, but on the Retivis website, it does not list a programming cable as part of the package contents. So I believe they sent that to me because this is a test and evaluation version. It's a Kenwood style programming cable. Also has a lithium ion battery, 220 milliamps. And it comes with an antenna. Now this antenna is specifically made for UHF. I'll see if I can get this to zoom in here and you can see that it's a 400 to 480 megahertz. We also have a wall wart or a charging adapter. Uh, this is for a US version. I believe they make a UK version as well. It also ships with a pocket clip. Now this pocket clip does not attach to the battery. It attaches directly to the radio, which is what we like. And it has a charging dock or a cradle where you can place the radio and charge it up uh, after use. I always leave the battery attached to the radio. I didn't see anything in the instruction manual that instructed you to do that, but I think it makes good sense. All right, let's get a good look at this radio. You can see the model number RT50 and it's listed as 10 watts and it runs off of 7.4 volts like most Chinese radios. It has a push to talk button and two programmable keys on the left hand side. On the right hand side the speaker and mic jack is covered. Uh, you need a screwdriver to remove that cover and that's part of its waterproof features. The battery clips on pretty nice and has a very proud clip at the bottom again for waterproofing and uh, the SMA female port on the radio for a change and we love that. Uh, it lowers the risk of breaking that antenna adapter. Let's go ahead and get this cover off and uh, hook up this programming cable and hook this thing to a computer and see what we can find out. And then you can see, as I mentioned earlier, it does have the, uh, the Kenwood style adapter. All right, let's get it connected. Okay, with the radio off, you want to make sure that your programming cable is firmly seated into the accessory port. And it's pretty simple. The other side of the cable gets plugged directly into your laptop. So simple, even an ape can do it. Let's go over and take a look at the Retivis website right now. And I keep saying Retivis and Retivis, but I'm not sure the right way to say it. Anyhow, if you take a look, this radio is currently on sale for $89, down from $129. And that sale is going to run from August 6th through the 28th. Here you can select the charger type that you need. Anyhow, there is also a contest going on where you can win this radio, and I'll post a link to that below. Um, you know, maybe you should subscribe to the Redivis website newsletter because they always have some kind of flash sale or some kind of contest going on. Anyhow, like I said, I'll provide a link to this site and a link to the contest below. Here you can see some of the specifications for the radio. I'm not going to go through them, but here's where I was talking about uh, the package list does not have the programming cable listed here. So if you do order one of these, you want to make sure that you get the programming cable because you're going to need it. Here's a picture that I found on the internet that shows the radio and the various components. Your side keys, your speakers, your, your power knob, uh, your channel selecting knob, belt clip and so forth. You can go ahead and pause this and take a look if, uh, if you're really interested in it. What I wanted to do is list some of the specs that I found interesting. Uh, the first one being the waterproof of the radio uh, IP67. Also I wanted to mention this is a DMR, it's a digital radio and an analog radio, so you can program it to operate on DMR frequencies 
or DMR uh, repeaters um, and hotspots as well as analog repeaters. It's got two zones that consist of 128 channels and can hold 200 contacts. It does single group or all call and it works with DMR tier 1 and tier 2. It uses two tone and five tone signaling. We're not going to review that here. Um, and it has high and low uh, power settings at 1 watt and 10 watts. It has a man down feature, scrambler, box, and scanning functions. All pretty typical of radios these days. Something I did want to mention and should be fairly obvious, the user interface on this radio is quite limited. There's no keypad, um, there's no LED or LCD screen, and uh, that's by design. This radio is a commercial radio. Um, it does have some overlap capability uh, with ham radio, namely the frequencies that it operates on. But it's really designed uh, for people who are going to use two or three talk groups, a few talk groups connected to a repeater, um, and maybe they're not uh, highly skilled radio operators. So they just need a radio that they can turn on, flip through a couple of different channels, and adjust the volume. And that's exactly what you have here. Um, the fact that you can put it on uh, digital and analog um, makes it a little bit more attractive to hams. And uh, one of the things I would say is, is that you know, you can use this uh, at home with like your hotspot, like a Pi Star or an open spot, something along those lines. And uh, one of the things that you can't see though are some of the DMR ID database um, values like call sign, name, and location. But if your Pi Star has a Nexion screen display, and uh, we have a video showing that, or you're using the uh, Pi Star administrative uh, web browser um, display, you can kind of see those things. So I'm not real sure it's important. Anyhow, that's for you to decide. Okay, now we're back at Redivis's website, and then we're going to go to support, and then we're going to go down to resources. And the reason we're doing this is we want to get the programming software so we can program this radio. Now, when I installed this, I did not have to install any drivers. They do have a link at the top of this page for their universal serial driver, I'm sorry, universal USB driver. Um, and you may want to download and install that. I've already got it installed, so I didn't need to do it for this particular installation. Your mileage may vary. Anyhow, once you download the zip file, you want to browse over to your downloads folder. And then I'm going to extract or unzip this file and then run through the setup procedure like I would any other program that I'm installing on my computer. Once it's done extracting, I'm going to go ahead and click on the executable. And I'm going to get a notification from Windows saying that this is potentially hazardous. And the reason is, is because this software is not digitally signed. But I ran it and I'm okay, so you can too. Anyhow, I just go through the default settings in the installation program and it will install the application for me, launch the application, and create a shortcut on my desktop. And there we go. We have the software running on our Windows 10 32-bit Home Edition laptop. Let's go ahead to the Help menu, click About, and just make sure we installed the right thing. And it says RT50 programming software, so we're good to go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go and select my COM port. I do this by going to Device and picking COM port 3. You can use Device Manager to see what COM port your radio is connected to. The next thing I want to do is read data from my radio. And I do this because I want to make a backup of the configuration that comes standard from the factory in the event that I do something foolish while programming this radio. As you can see, the code plug reads from the radio pretty quickly. This is not sped up. And that's because the radio is fairly limited in feature and storage. Once this is done, I'm going to go up to File, and then I'm going to do Save As, and I'm going to save a copy of this to my desktop. You can save yours wherever you want. Next, let's go ahead and walk through the settings or the menu options on the left side of the screen. Under basic settings, there's a couple of different forms where you can put in things like your model number, your radio name, and your radio ID. It's very important that you put your DMR radio ID in that field. You can set a password for programming your radio. I would not do that because you might forget it. And then it also has some other settings over here. We're going to change the backlight time from uh, 10 to 20 seconds because I like to keep that thing lit for a little longer because I've moved pretty slow, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Anyhow, we're going to leave the rest of these settings okay. And let's take a look at some of the other panels. Here's where you can change the uh, P1 and P2 keys on the side of the radio. And I'm not sure what that short press analog call means, so we might take a look at that and change it to something else. I don't want to accidentally make an analog call that uh, is unintended. So we're going to go ahead and set that to no set. 
And I think we're going to leave the rest of these as is. As mentioned earlier, this radio does have two zones. Here we're looking at zone one. And you can go through the different parameters in programming a channel here. If you hit the more option, then you can actually get more detail. This is for a digital channel. If you select an analog channel, the options are going to be a little bit different. And you can go ahead and you can program these just like you would any other DMR radio. We're not going to go through programming the radio. I just want to take a walk through the configuration options that are available. There are lots of videos on the internet, some on my channel, that show you how to do a code plug. Anyhow, I'm just playing around with some of these settings. You can see the power low to high. You can see what contact you want to pick. Uh, you can set timeout variables. Well, on the left-hand side, you can see that there are some encryption options. And uh, we don't play around with that because you're not allowed to encrypt any of your signals on, uh, on ham radio. Anyhow, let's click OK and continue taking a look at the different options that are available. Oh, here's uh, analog. And you can see it's changed a little bit since earlier. You can set a uh, PL tone if you'd like. Um, you have your RX settings separated from your TX settings, which I actually think makes it a little bit easier to program. Here's where you would set up and configure your scan lists. And then what you do is, is you would create a scan list and then add any of the channels um, that you want in that particular list. Not very complicated. Here under digital contacts is where you would set up uh, private calls and group calls. And when you set up one of these, your call type will dictate what kind of group or private call it's going to be. Contacts alias really doesn't matter, it's just a name. And then the ID would actually be the DMR ID or talk group ID. Here you set up your uh, RX group list and then you would program your channel or your frequencies in your zone that we looked at earlier uh, with an RX list if you wanted to use one of those. And then here are the two tone and five tone settings that I said we really weren't really gonna look at or mess around with. Anyhow, that part's done. Let's go ahead and uh, program this radio off camera and give it a sound test. Power on. One. So here we are with the programmed radio. I have it connected to DMR networks via my hotspot. Um, it really wasn't that hard to program. You saw the interface was pretty simple. And uh, it actually sounds pretty well. And uh, when I tested it on Parrot or the TalkBack, uh, I was able to hear myself pretty well. So uh, pretty impressive uh, for this little radio. Stitcher Echo 2, Mike Papa Delta, November 6, Delta, India, Quebec. Um, I did not hear anything that time, so I guess packet loss got bad. And, um, but... Um, if I don't hear any more from you, I will thank you very much for the chat and the cheer. And it's probably about the best ham radio I'm going to get today. So thank you and best 73 and blessings. And uh, good evening, sir. Let's talk a little bit about what I liked. I like that this radio is analog and DMR. I think it would be handy if uh, maybe there's a local DMR repeater where I manage a couple of talk groups or monitor, I should say, a couple of talk groups, like maybe statewide, uh, maybe a local. And uh, I don't have to do a lot of programming on my radio, and I don't need a really fancy interface, and maybe I know everybody there. Also for analog, maybe there's an analog repeater that's close by that I use with the same kind of use case. Um, I like that. I really like the fact that it's waterproof. So I want to get out and do some testing, so you're going to see some more videos of this thing getting dunked and, uh, and seeing how it works. Um, the simple user interface is pretty nice. Uh, it's not something I typically go for for me because I kind of like to play around with features and program radios all the time. But maybe I've got another person uh, who just got their ham license in my family and uh, we're, going, we're going outside to do some kind of activity and I want them to have some sort of communications capability. Here's a quick uh, turn it on radio and anybody can use it. I love the fact that it has a female SMA adapter and we talked a little bit about that. I hate radios that have the male, <clears throat> sorry about that, SMA adapters, but there's not much I can do about it because that's how they all are these days. This thing feels pretty rugged. I think it could take a tumble down a flight of stairs or uh, you know, fall out of your pocket while you're on a hike and, and be just fine. I also like the fact that the radio uh, goes up to 10 watts. and That gives you a little bit of a further boost, a little bit more power when, uh, when you may need it. All right, now let's talk a couple of uh, opportunities for improvements. And uh, one thing that I feel pretty strongly about is, is that any DMR radio that requires you to program it from a computer should have the data cable included. It really should just ship with that and be included in the price. The fact that you have to worry about or add it separately seems a little bit silly to me. Uh, it would be fantastic if this radio was dual band where it could do uh, UHF and VHF. 
But I understand that that drives up the cost and increases the complexity of the radio. So while I'm happy with the radio as is, it would be really nice. It'd be a great value if you could uh, get du dual band capability there. And then the other one is something I harp on all the time. Uh, I wish it had a squelch knob that was external to the radio. Um, and maybe external to the radio doesn't mean the right thing. But to program the squelch on this, it's my understanding right now I have to hook it up to a computer to do that. So if I'm out in the field and I'm using maybe analog repeater or something like that, and I'm getting some interference, I really can't adjust the squelch. Maybe I can program one of the P1 or P2 buttons to do that, but I don't know. Squelch knob would be fantastic. Anyhow, that's really it, folks. I want to thank Retivus or Redivus for sending this radio to me for review, and I want to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more content of a similar nature, go ahead and click like and subscribe, or leave a comment below letting me know your thoughts. Thanks, everybody.